Uh, how did I decide to become an artist? Well, you don't decide, you are chosen. Uh, no, um, I've always been an artist ever since I really could pick up a pencil. A distinct memory is I used to love drawing the Saturday morning cartoons. And my mom, <laughs> she saw me draw the action lines from someone. She said for a five-year-old kid to know to draw those action lines, she, she knew I was going to be an artist from then on. As a kid, I thought that animation was the way to go, you know, because art was this mysterious thing. Like, I didn't even know if people got paid for it, and uh, my only exposures to art were what I saw on TV, and occasionally when we went to the 50th State Fair and there was that guy drawing uh, caricatures of people, I was like, okay, I'm either going to be that guy <laughs> or I'm going to be like making cartoons and stuff. And, and I really wanted to do that. I am a self-taught artist. I literally would comb through comic books and library books. But that has taken me through so many other careers. Like uh, I briefly had a stint as a photographer. After, you know, doing photography for five years, I kind of got uh, overwhelmed by it and kind of burnt out by it. Living in the Instagram era, everyone thought what I did was a, a filter. Yeah, the value of my photography work kind of went down and that's when I just started to look at illustration as uh, an alternative because I've always loved drawing as a kid. And so I thought, well, why don't I just pick up a pencil and start drawing again? At first, I started doing tattoo designs. And I really loved drag queens. And so I decided to just combine my love of tattoo art with drag queens. And there you go. I stopped doing the tattoo designs because people would literally take a screenshot to their tattoo artist and say, Put this on me. Most artists would probably be flattered by the gesture. Um, I thought it was kind of a dick move. <laughs> so after I stopped doing tattoo designs, I thought, what else do I love? And it was comic books. went from looking like a Disney golden book to <laughs> pop art that you would see in a museum to the comic book style that I love now. I love keeping my old work up because I believe it's important for people to see that journey. If someone is really inspired and wants to kind of do what I'm doing, the best place to start is with the stuff that you love. Oh, I saw this cartoon or I saw this comic book a long time ago. Oh, who was the, who was the penciler on this? Oh, who was the inker on this? Um, oh, what pen did they use? In the ways that I'm self-taught, I'm also, uh, I, I really encourage to have uh, self-discovery and just get lost in material. The way how a lot of people found my art is by me doing passion projects. So passion projects are stuff where no one pays you, you know. At most you can use it in your portfolio and so that's a passion project. But the key word there is passion because you believe in it so much, you love it so much, and it's gonna show. All it took was one of the famous drag queens to share my art, and then that just catapulted it. I'm doing some uh, comic book covers uh, for Logo TV slash VH1. Uh, it's for Pride Month and it's to honor a lot of the LGBT heroes. Um, it's a comic book series we're calling Heroes of History. 
They will feature such uh, iconic LGBT people such as Harvey Milk, Marsha P. Johnson, Bayard Rustin. It's really cool to learn about all these people that I didn't know that really kind of helped to shape LGBT history. And so it's an honor to be able to do these comic book covers of all of them. I think the key to staying motivated is just keep having ridiculous dreams, you know? Uh, never would I ever thought that I would be like working with all these famous drag queens. Never would I ever thought that I'd be doing work for VH1 or anything like that. Um, but you never know until you try. So no matter what kind of art you decide to do, whether it's singing, dancing, drawing, just make sure that it's fun, all right? <laughs>